12 states, folks. You heard me. We're going to have voter activations. We're going to bring out that John Lewis Good Trouble bus. We're going to have our Freedom Riders. We're going to be going around 12 states. And we're going to be agitating for people to vote and making sure people are aware of it, that it's time to vote. And we're going to have some concerts, some concerts with some musicians and comedians and praise dance and all kinds of stuff so that people know that it's time to vote and that they get assistance in voting. So tell us, tell us, Donald, you know, what are some of the interactions that will be happening for those who are homeless so they know about their right to vote? Absolutely. Thank you so much. This this is something we've been doing um, education-wise for decades. So we've, right. uh, our You Don't Need a Home to Vote manual has been online, used by uh, the, the uh, Office of the President and the U.S. Interagency Council, uh, to identify the specific laws in each jurisdiction. Sorry, I think uh, I was just say. So we've been using our tool to make sure people were aware of their rights. Also, one of the challenges with nonprofits is they're worried about their 501c3 status, uh, which isn't an issue as long as you're not endorsing candidates. You absolutely, as a nonprofit, have a right. Uh, to register people to vote. So uh, that education is something we've always done. What we've decided over the last couple of years is we needed to do more. That what we found is that statistically, just as the, as you mentioned about the students, if people experiencing homelessness and people who are in low-income uh, statuses, if they are given support in registering, uh, they're more likely to vote. Now, they're not a monolith. We don't know how they'll vote, but it's so important that they do vote. So we are partnering with TJC and others and getting on the ground. Uh, we'll be going to shelters, uh, soup kitchens. There you go. Uh, we'll, you, we'll even be uh, a, addressing the needs of people who are unsheltered and getting them uh, involved. Because one thing that's happened this year, there was a Supreme Court decision. I'll just touch on this very briefly that made it legal basically to criminalize people that are homeless, Ah. that uh, Ah. people would be arrested if they're sleeping outside, even if there's not enough shelter in in the community. So what we've decided to do is make sure that people in those communities have have the option, have the necessary information to be able to make decisions that are affecting their lives, because those are not federal decisions. They're not a part of the presidential election. There's a local uh, decision, the mayor, the city councilman, the state representative, the sheriff. Those are who uh, who are in the, the, the brain trust. They're making decisions that it's okay to arrest people. And we want to, we, we can change that. There's enough people experiencing homelessness in this country to truly have an effect on elections. And we want to make sure that's happening. And we really are excited <laughs> about the partnerships There's the fun of the concerts, but there's also the work that's really going to change the direction uh, when it comes to policy about homelessness and housing in this country. And, and, you know, Donald, I think you raise a really great point, because with that uh, grant passing case that you're making reference to out of, uh, I think it's Portland, Oregon, uh, where they criminalized uh, being uh, unhoused or being homeless, one of the things that's interesting, I think, in that case, and it really ties in directly to voting, is that it's the local elected officials that make the decision as to whether or not there should be laws on the book to criminalize being homeless or or unhoused in these areas, in these communities. And so if if we're having, you know, and and I don't want to put uh, words in your mouth, but I'm going to put some words in your mouth. If if we're having the people that are directly impacted by this start uh, electing officials, that have their best interest at heart and not criminalizing uh, their uh, situations of being homeless, then you you directly impact those types of decisions. I I can remember Reverend Jackson saying that there's a freedom train uh, coming, but you've got to be registered to ride. And and, and it just seems as though this is right along those lines where uh, where we've got to register the people that are directly impacted and to inform them of the impact that they can have when they ele- uh, when they vote for people along these issues. Is, is that where you're headed with that, uh, uh, Donald, Mr. Whitehead? 
Uh, absolutely. And, and, and I was mentioning that my sound may have gone out, but that, that's exactly what we're saying. Um, these aren't the issues that are going to be decided by a presidential election or the president or even Congress. So it, it is the local officials. It, it's even down to the, the library board and the, and the school board that are impacting those kind of decisions on people's lives. And they should be empowered. And a part of what we have to do is that a lot of those individuals uh, have been so traumatized by the criminalization, by the lack of housing and, and other underlying issues that we have to get them to understand that even though they're in the midst of that trauma, they are still human beings and they still have the right to vote. Uh, it's it's a foundational right in this country. And we have to get people uh, back into the thought process that what Jesse Jackson said and what Martin Luther King said is that we have the opportunity to change the world, but we have to get involved. And mm-hmm. I wanted to, uh, you know, to uh, make sure that we talk to another set of voters. We've been talking a lot about the people who are unregistered, they're new vote voters. We're so proud of all the new voters who are vote, uh, registering, uh, black, young black women leading the way, 179% increase woo-hoo, in their voter registrations. But I also want to talk about the folks sitting out there who are confused because they didn't vote. In 2016, 2018, 2020, 2022, and they're sitting up there going, ooh, is my voter registration any good any longer? But also all those folks who have heard about voter purging going on in their states, in their counties, all of those people who have received those bizarre-looking emails, uh, well, not emails, bizarre-looking postcards that say they're from the Board of Elections and are asking you, do you still live at this address? Uh, the cards that have come to people and people have been calling us about them that are saying I, that you've been placed on the inactive voter list. Those people. Those people, Romeo, what do we have to tell them? Don't we need to tell them that they need to check their voter registration ASAP? Yes, Barbara, that's extremely important right, for for voters to check their voter registration. Uh, we know that there there are um, there are voters that are getting purged from voters lists in yes. certain states. Yes. So it's extremely important to make sure that if you're registered to vote. This is the moment to start checking your voter registration to make sure that when you're ready to cast your ballot, right, that you're able to do so. Um, so uh, there's a very, we have a very good guide, a one-stop shop uh, for all election information, right? That's vote411.org. Um, and voters can go into that website uh, of the league, right? And we provide this nonpartisan election information, um, per state, per, per and, and voters can definitely see as well um, that down the ballot um, up to candidates that are running for nonpartisan uh, positions in their communities as well. Um, and we also provide very good guidance and and, and just in, in instructions on uh, for folks that uh, are 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 vote, voting but are living with a disability. Right or for folks that need support to be able to cast their ballot, like everything can be found on vote411.org for um, specific states as well. So, um, making sure that that voters are checking their voter registration is extremely important. This is the moment to do so throughout this month of September. All right, and everybody, listen up. April by April the seventh, fifteen states will have closed their voter registration. So you must get serious about voting, registering to vote now. If you're a new voter, if you're an old voter but you haven't been voting, or if you got one of those funny cards, first of all, if you get a card saying, do you still live at this address, be sure to return it and say yes. Uh, 
if that is your circumstance. But also, if you got one of those inactive voter li- uh, list uh, notices, or if you just don't know, am I still good because I moved? All of that, you need to check your voter registration. You know, you need to go to the, your local league and get assistance. Please, people, do that now. Don't sit around waiting. Uh, and I want to call on each of our uh, guests. Uh, before you depart us, to tell people uh, your last final one-minute thought and how people can reach you. Why don't we start with Eldrick? You can reach me by Instagram at T-H-E-E-L-D-R-I-C-C-O-L-E-M-A-N. All right. And one, do you have a final word for our folks? And, yes, um, get out, register to vote. Make sure you're looking over policies and what these politicians are um, trying to do and what their plans are, and make sure that you vote wisely and vote for who um, is trying to help you. And get out and do your part in this election. We're and so proud of you. And, Eldrick, I thought I heard you say, if you didn't say it, I'm saying it for you, that you put a challenge out to every HBCU across this country. Hey, 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 hey. More, more, more students to vote than, uh, than Alabama State has already registered and plans on registering. Is that, ac- is that accurate, Eldrick? Did you say that? Well, I didn't say it, but I do challenge them to register. <laughs> <laughs> Let you accept Thanks. the challenge. <laughs> All right. Now, make sure you got that polling site on your campuses, folks. Uh, you know, you know that makes all the difference in the world. Arg- agitate, argue. Make sure you got a polling site on your campus. I don't care what kind of campus you are. Make sure you got a polling site. Even community colleges, we need polling sites. All right. Uh, the same question to you, Donald Whitehead. Your um, so, uh, touch. Mm-hmm. I would offer a similar challenge. I mean, I think people really need to remember uh, how we got the right to vote in the first place, how many of our ancestors lost their lives for this, this, this opportunity that we have. And we need to make sure that we are, are for this generation, uh, holding on to that mantle, making sure that we are doing what we can do to make change in our country. Um, If we don't register, if we don't vote, nobody's going to take care of the things that we need to make our lives better. So I'll challenge every nonprofit, every shelter, every soup kitchen, every transitional housing program in this country, register people to vote. If you want more housing dollars, if you want more shelter dollars, if you want to stop criminalization, because we know that that is an ineffective way to solve homelessness, you got to help people vote, and you got to register people and get them to the polls. And I can be reached at dwhitehead at nationalhomeless.org. Wow. And the same to you, Romel Sandino. Thank you, Barbara. Um, No, I I do want to echo everything that that the other speakers shared um, and connecting it to National Voter Registration Day on September the 17th and throughout that week. Um, if, if you, uh, want to support and plug in, there's like, everyone is going to be playing a role during this critical election season and we need everyone in this, in this struggle, right? So, um, plug into your local, uh, civic engagement organization and, uh, and, and plug into the national voter registration day events being planned or plan your own, right? Just like Barbara shared, plan your own, uh, Print yes. out flyers, print out, print out, uh, yes. print out. Like, go on social media, uh, spread the message, right? Uh, make sure that if you're if you aren't registered at this moment, make sure to immediately uh, register to vote. Um, if you're registered, check your voter registration um, and uh, make a voting plan, right? It's never too early to start making a, start making a voting plan on how you're going to get out and cast your ballot and make your voice heard through your vote. Um, and then lastly, uh, most importantly, also make sure that you're empowering your friends and families and neighbors yeah. uh, to also register and to also make a voting plan and to get out to vote. Um, we need all voters to get get out dr- during this election season 
right? Um, and so we're all going to be working towards election day, um, and then the real work will start that day immediately after election day as well. Um, but reach out to your friends, families, check in with your neighbors, and make sure that they're uh, registered, that they are checking their voter registration. One of the powerful ways that we at the league are, are doing this is using this digital, uh, national digital relational um, uh, a- application on the phone. You can follow us and you could join our virtual community uh, by downloading yeah, League in Action if you're interested, right? And we have pre-written scripted message that you nice. can uh, easily just share with your friends and families and your neighbors. Um, so that app is League in 